Hello, welcome back to the channel. Ed Padgett here. My last video about traction for back pain and scoliosis got some great feedback. So I want to take a moment here and make another video to help you take it to the next level. But before we start, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and get access to some of the best videos out there for managing back pain, scoliosis, and injuries. Okay, so how do we make this traction work? Well, we take one of these bands, a thick rubber band. This one's from a company called Ignite. But you can go onto Amazon and find any company that does these thick bands. We want it to not to give very much because it needs to be able to pull back on the hips. Then you've got to attach it to something. Now, I'm lucky because I've got some hooks here, but you could attach it to something like a piece of furniture, or you could attach it between doors or on a door handle, or you could attach it even on something like um, the banisters of a staircase. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this onto my hook. And then we're going to think about how the pelvis is going to be working here. So the actual movement of the downward dog takes the spine and flexes it at the junction between the pelvis and the lumbar spine. It's called the L5-S1. Now we can have a lot of degeneration there. We can have facets, um, the facet gets arthritis. We can have the ligamentum flavum changing. We can have the discs actually having disc bulges or even disc herniations. And so once we put a bit of traction in there, it allows a little bit of space to come in there and blood flow to get in to flush out any toxins and any inflammation and also provide decent nutrients for the cells to repair. So the traction is great, but we can make the traction better by using three planes of motion to move the pelvis. So the first one is a flexion extension. So flexion extension is similar to a cat cow like this. So we can move the pelvis forwards and backwards. Then we can move the pelvis left and right. So we can hike one hip up, the other hip up like this. That exercises the muscles of the lower back, the QL muscles, but also opens up these little joints called the facet joints. Now, one facet joint that's commonly irritated in people is the L5-S1. And this is simply, if there's, there's two of them, this is simply opening up one side like this and then closing down the other side. So it's acting as a pump that pumps out that inflammation. And lastly, the lumbar spine has a little bit of rotation in it. And so if we move the pelvis like this, left and right into rotation, we can actually basically take those vertebra and move them apart like this. It's like we're kind of tractioning and moving apart. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like because it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we're putting the, the band around the pelvis onto the bony bits here, and we're getting down into the downward dog. Downward dog, you need a relatively straight back, relatively straight legs. You'll be pushing your fingers and your thumbs, your index finger and your thumb, into the ground, whilst trying to spiral out your arms into external rotation. So your arms go outwards and your thumb goes inwards. And settle into downward dog for as long as you want. Enjoy that feeling of traction. But I'm going to go ahead and show you those three movements. So the first one is flexion here and then extension. So you're flexing and extending. And really uh, exercising the abdominals and then relaxing and letting the lower back drop down. You'll feel a massive increase in tension in your hamstrings when you do that. You can do that for as long as you want. Next one is the frontal plane. So we're pulling that hip up towards the shoulder. So I'm pulling my hip here up towards my shoulder. I'm trying to keep that pure frontal plane, try not to rotate too much. It's like you're wiggling your butt left and right, really getting those lower back muscles fired up and working and pumping out that inflammation. The last movement here is rotation. So I'm gonna drop one knee down. You can see the way my pelvis moves down like this. And now I'm going to allow that traction to happen whilst rotating my pelvis left and right. And sure, these are not going to be fully, fully pure movements. They're going to have a little bit of all three in every movement. But the idea is that you separate them out for repetitions or time. You can go as long as you want on that one as well. And so. The idea is that you get down to that position, maybe you set a timer, one, two, three minutes, something like that, on each plane, and you allow your spine to relax, elongate, and get rid of that inflammation, and bring in new blood to help the healing of your lumbar spine. 
So you're going to find that really, really beneficial to do. And you can do that every single day. I'm going to wrap this video up now, but if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and click that notification bell and send my channel to a friend who you think would enjoy this content as well. Thank you so much for doing those things. They make a huge difference. Also, if you have scoliosis, I want to tell you about the amazing community we're building on Facebook. I'd like you to join this group, which is where a lot of the action and interaction happens with my community. So just follow the link in the description below or in that first pinned comment. So stay tuned for my next video, which will be up soon. Till next time, stay loose.